We're about to do something that's gonna blow the internet's mind. Okay, so today's project is this. We got it cleaned up, all ball honed out, all the ceiling surfaces are all cleaned off. We're ready to assemble this sucker. We're gonna build this today after work. The goal is to get the bottom end all done. So pistons and the crank and the cam bearings put in it tonight and get it put in that truck. So hopefully we'll get after it, see what we can get done. All right, so we're gonna take these cam bearings out. One down. Junkers. So when you're <laughs> doing cam bearings on one of these, they only go back in certain spots. So when we're putting them back in, I'll show you. Otherwise, they're different sizes and you will ruin some stuff. There we got it. All right, we'll pull that out of there. Get some cam bearings and we'll reinstall them suckers. Timing chain, lifters, oil pump. We'll see if all this will work. I didn't order any of this, so it's just stuff that has been laying around. I inherited from other people. Ooh, about lost engine bearings. These are the things we're after, man. It usually says right here on the top of the box for where they go, but this one doesn't. That's great. We'll figure it out. All right, we finally found it, what we were looking for. So this one is the smallest. This one is 2.1. So that tells me that that's number one. That is two and five. And this is three and four. Okay, we'll put them in. Okay, now there's something else that's super important that you have to do. I'll take this out and show you. Okay, if you look down in there, see that hole? Okay, that is how you line your, your oil hole up on your cam. So, if that's not lined up, your cam doesn't get oil and it burns it up. We don't want that. So, which number did we decide here, Land? That one. Is number what? Five. Five, you're right. Ease that down onto there and we'll tighten it up. And then we just got to tighten that. We're going to tip this up on its side. And we're just going to tip it right over so I can see it. So what you do is pull it in, check it. I just want that hole to be lined up perfect. Yeah, right there's lined up. It's going right in like it should. We'll take that. That's lined up. Bearings are good still. Okay. On to the next one. Tip this thing back over so I can get to it. Working? Yep. She's pulling in straight. That's what we were after. Okay. Good as new. Thinking about what they've done for a day or two. Oh yeah. They're clean enough. Getting them all cleaned up. Put this thing up so we're not screwing it up because we still have to put one of those in because we ruined one. But luckily it's the back one, so I can just take the motor off, the stand, and set it on there. What I did is I didn't have this engaged in it fully and it tried to pull this lip through, the, through this bearing and just ruined it. Disassemble this whole thing so we can reassemble. We're gonna go to cleaning. Sure. <laughs> Fireball. 
<laughs> Got my new knife today in the mill. Knockoff version, but of what? Of a C Z T C Z T. Supposed to be awesome knives. I usually have my bench made in my pocket. I decided I'd ruin this one for a bit. That's what I do to knives is ruining them. But I'm okay with that because it was 40 bucks. <laughs> I really like bench maids. They're awesome knives. But they're expensive knives too. And when you're scraping gaskets with an expensive knife, it's not very good. So that's why you buy your wish, cheap baby. One. It takes three months to get them here. But they're cheap and they work. So we got up in Zion on a bike trip. And my brother-in-law locked his bike up. And then the comm didn't work to get it off. And we didn't have anything. We're clear up in this canyon. So we had my pocket knife and we put it on the cable. Took a big stob of wood and beat it down through the cable. It ruined my knife. <laughs> but we didn't have to leave the front tire of his bike there. So it was a win. <laughs> You know why I'm putting <laughs> that hole down? So it's oil. That, because it lines up with that hole, which gives the crank oil. We don't do that. Bad news. This is my trusty old lithium. This is what I built motors with. The guy that taught me how to build motors, this is what he used. And I've just always used it ever since, and it's done me a good job. I've only ever smoked one and that was an ls motor i built for derbian and the they sold me a faulty oil pump let's clean this pig up this right here is gonna get set in here okay she's in and turning we're about to do something that we've never filmed in this shop on this show Using a torque wrench. That's it. We're gonna we're gonna break out the torque wrench. We're gonna torque all these mains down. We'll torque them down, and then we're gonna pull probably that one and that one off, and we'll plastic gauge them real quick. What does that mean? I'll show you. That's plastic gauge right there. So I'll show you what we're gonna do. Just like it was supposed to be. We're gonna take that little piece of plastic gauge, lay it right across the crank right there. The reason we're doing this is because I don't know anything about this motor. It was given to me. So we're gonna figure out if everything's in spec. Okay, that's torqued. Now we're going to pull it off. Okay. Okay, you line it up with these marks right here. And you find how big it is. So it lines up with that. Which we're... We're good. Yep. It says we are within spec. 65.5. Okay. Cranks in it. And it does cranking stuff. <laughs> now... You know what time it is? Rings. So we're just making sure that the rings don't collapse and that we got a decent gap, which we do. Horsepower, we would gap this top ring if we were gonna put some boost to it or something. How much would you gap it? Uh, 30 or 40 thousandths right there so that it, when it gets hot, it won't touch each other. But this is international motor. <laughs> she ain't gonna need boost. It may get crazy and send it, <laughs> but I doubt it. How many piston rings have you broke? I oh. broke a few in my life. Before I bought those pliers and I was trying to spin them on, I broke quite a few. We're about to have these things whipped. One out of two ain't so bad, or 20, whatever I'm at. There's two. That's all 
my god. Is that? That is. That is what? That is you. Dun, dun, dun. What do we have? We got some stuff from fans. So, I already opened this up. Ginormous chocolate bunnies. Thanks to Derek Lamb. Thank you so much. I peeked at this one and I'm kind of excited about it. By the way, these things I got sent the other day are awesome. Magnet lights. Look awesome. Bright. Love them. Thank you very much. This is looking at this. He's like, comics. I'm like, they still have comics in the newspaper? I used to save comics. <laughs> so this is from Canada. Canada? Yeah. It's from Canada. That's how I say it. Canada. It's Canadian. <laughs> There's maple syrup in there. Sweet. The last time we had maple syrup that was pure maple syrup, that was when we went to New York and our buddy Dan Bolton gave us some. So this is gonna be awesome because that was delicious. Let me get my uh, brand new knife out. Oh gosh! Ha ha ha! An old Mountain Dew sign. That is super sweet. <laughs> That's cool. From Rose and Dave Crouchman, Lily the dog, Chester the cat. Thank you guys sweet. so Thank you much. Very much. I love Up with this. all my other stuff, so. And we'll enjoy this syrup. Yes, we shall. All right, I'm gonna leave with these giant chocolate bunnies now. Chocolate, <laughs> exactly. Wow. You know what that's from? Work, I'm allergic to work. <laughs> and this is about to turn into work right here, putting all this together. Now these bearings are standard. And that crank is supposed to be standard from everything I can measure, so. We'll uh, put them together, we'll plastic gauge a couple of them, see if they're happy. If they're happy and they know it, we'll torque them down. You just barely just set that right on the bearing. Well, that was an accident. <laughs> you can't win them all, Land. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Yep. Okay. Bearing caps, done. Pistons, or rods, going in. Having it. Once again, I didn't buy any of these parts. They were all just given to me. The guy was moving. He said I could have them. And it doesn't feel like the the oil ring wants to drop down in there. Alright, so we figured out the problem why they weren't dropping in. The oil ring is a different style. So what we did is we took the old inner part of the ring and put the new rings on it. So we basically build a little hybrid action going on here. <laughs> it's got new rings, so it will should work just wonderful. Okay, we'll ease this one down into the cylinder. Those little flappers always go to the outside. You can always remember that when you're putting a motor together. All right, she is uh, put together. We got it handled. Pistons are all in it. Everything's good. So we'll finish tomorrow night. Ran out of time. I got to get up early, so uh, that's all I'm getting done tonight. All right, so uh, it's after work again. I got a cam bearing, I found some. Got the cam bearing in before Land got here. He's running the camera. Say hi. Hi. And I'm just gonna, cam's in it, timing chain's on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and torque these bad boys down. All right, good enough. Then we gotta put the rear main on it. Then we can put the timing cover on it, bolt the oil pan on it, put the oil pump or oil um filter thing in there then we can bolt it on and paint the bottom end so we're gonna get that done and the head's done tonight this is the old box from the cam it's just a stock cam 
This thing doesn't need to rumble. We're gonna put a super quiet exhaust on that thing anyway, because it's a parade truck. We don't want it making lots of noise. I'm sure it'll do a burnout. All right, we're getting this all cleaned up. We'll put some seals in it, tear into the gasket kit. We should be able to get this all put on. Right through it. <laughs> okay, now if the part stores didn't fail us, we should have the right seal right there. Feels pretty right. There's a, a gasket in the way. We may end up taking this sucker off of there. And it's stuck on tight. That's real nice, Clark. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna be forced into it. Like we're gonna have to get the crane, lift this thing up and set it on the ground and take that off because we don't want oil leaks. Yeah, they, uh, if you don't Permatex these in, they leak. So we will Permatex it. I bet that'll work. We don't need much on here. This, this is a chrome cover and they are notorious for leaking. So that's why we're doing this. If I, wanted to spend a little time I could probably go find a black cover but this one's gonna be just fine it's gonna get painted orange anyway so we don't care what color it looks like to start with okay there's that all right we've done all we can do without taking this motor off of here and fixing the back of that so that's what we're going to do. We might as well get this stuff put in while we're there. Plug this hole up and then we'll get the other stuff. I think, there, I think that freeze plug's still in there. It is. In there. Okay. That one's done. Okay. Now we clean this gasket off, and we can put that on, put the motor back on. We don't want this thing to leak. I hate rear main leaks. They're the worst. All right, now we need to take this here stuff. You gotta do the corners. And we need this. Okay, we're ready for an oil pan. She's looking like a motor. We're about to do something that's gonna blow the internet's mind. Junk filters. <laughs> but it's getting changed after we break it in anyway. There's that. We can install the balancer and the timing mark I forgot to put on. Let's install a balancer, what do you say? Then you just take this little hair wrench device, put it on there. Screw this thing out of there. Harmonic balancer is balancing. Put all this stuff back. So you have it the next time. Handled. Okay, we're uh, we're basically done with that part of it. That's like dirt that's been in there for a minute or two. All right, that that's all handled now. Enough. Now we're just going to paint it and let it rest for the night, and then tomorrow we'll get after these heads. We gotta maybe we'll tear them apart tonight, real quick, and get all the valves laid out and everything so we can have them soaking in the tank. 
Chevrolet orange, baby. All right, so these heads are gross. They are caked on. I don't even know what number they are because they're so caked on, but we're gonna tear them apart. And this is how I was always taught how to tear them apart. Quick and easy. Bowser wore a little, but I had the old style valve cells on it that are just a O-ring and we're going to put some umbrellas on it. That's as slick as that gets. One head apart. So when you're tearing these apart, you got to know what springs go back where. Well, not so much the springs, but the keepers. So all the exhaust valves have these rotators on them so that the valve turns so it'll stay seating. So it's good to know just a little tip bit of information for you. If no one knew that, you do now. So how I learned how to do this is when I was 15, my age, Landon's age, I got a job in a machine shop. And I learned how to do a whole bunch of this stuff, bore motors and grinding valves and surface heads and put seats in, all kinds of stuff. And I worked there for four years all the way through high school. And the guy taught me a whole bunch. I learned a ton. So, and then I've been doing this my whole life, really. Just uh, my dad, we never had money to pay anybody, so we figured it out. And I took what he taught me and everything I could learn from every other old person around that I knew and I figured out how to do this stuff. Then I just watched and watched and bought a piece of machinery at a time until I had enough stuff I could do it. My valve grinders under that. I don't have a head surfacer. We'll put a straight edge on these and make sure that they're still flat. Usually small block Chevy heads are good and they don't warp around a lot so. We're gonna set those in the solvent tank tonight. Clean all of this stuff up in the solvent tank. Put some new valves or valve seals on them. These ones right here, these umbrellas, they're way better. We'll put those back on them. Slap these heads together and bolt them on there. Then we can put an intake on it. Really by Friday, I ought to be putting this motor in this truck. Then we'll see if it runs or blows up. Okay, we need to bring some heads over here these are that motor was just filthy man and that amount of silicone that they used on the that's unbelievable I believe those are just gonna get thrown away we'll, we'll do something different because those are gross yeah. <sighs> Fingers. And there is, there is no shortage of grease and nastiness on them. Good enough, I'm gonna wash my hands. We're gonna call it a night. So, today is Friday, my day off. But, we're gonna get these heads done today. So, we're trying to scrape all this old gasket off of them right now. We got them clean enough that we can see that they're 336s. So, just a 194 head. Good for this truck. We'll keep cleaning. And then we'll grind some valves and some seats. I'll show you guys how to do that, or at least how I do that. Maybe it ain't how everyone else does it, but it's how I was taught how to do it. Yeah, that's gonna work. We can make that seal up. Now all we gotta do is grind some seats and valves. One head is ready for some valve grinding. We'll check and see where they're running. Just put a line on it with a Sharpie. 
drop it down in, spin it around a little. It's super wide. We're gonna thin that right up, put it right in the middle of the valve. It'll be sealing up. Let's see what the intakers look like. Yeah, they're pretty thick too. We'll thin them up. Now let's see if the old girl is gonna pump some oil. Pump some oil, Betsy. The hair she blows. We're pumping now. We're cleaning the stone up. Your goal is to not let it chatter. Then we'll pull it out. Need my rag right there. Okay. There's your valve. That's cool. Yep. See how you got spots in it? You just go until it cleans and you want to move the whole stone so you keep the stone even. Done. Those are ground. That should do it. We'll cut a 45 and a 22 on them to trim them down. Okay, I'll show you why we're, why we're going to trim them down now. So we'll put this big blue on here. We'll throw it in. We'll spin it. See how wide that is? We're gonna trim the top down on a 22 and we'll bring that down so there's a bigger gap at the top then it won't leak, won't burn a valve. Here's a grinder well. This is cut at a 22. Kind of a tedious process you gotta go through to get it right, but coming down. Takes a minute. Yep, I like it. One down, on to the next one. First exhaust valve. Last one, let's see how she's gonna seal. Love it. Okay, one head is done. We can clean it up and assemble. I'll set it over here out of the way. Thing back to bed. Okay, basically need to clean our hands off, clean the heads off, and assemble the crap out of them. Get her cleaned up good. And this thing will be happy. All right, we're ready to assemble. That almost fell right on the ground. You want to put some some lube on these things to give them a chance because they're not going to get oil for a minute. So, we'll give them all the chance we can give them with this stuff. The guides and everything feel pretty good in this motor, or in this, these heads, they're tight. They don't have any play, so there's no reason things shouldn't live forever. Okay, these are umbrella sills. They're way better than the ones that were on here originally so we'll push all those on this motor had originally just little o-rings on it all right i'll go get the valve springs we'll set them right here and we'll start assembling this sucker all right there's those this motor was so nasty. All right, so the ones with the rotator springs go on the exhaust valves. 
One head is almost assembled. One head completed. Built. She is ready to run. We're gonna go set it over here. A little bit of paint over spray we're gonna scrape. Make the gasket stick. We're gonna up our odds for not leaking and we're gonna cap copper tack these things. Um, these ones are actually a little different. I don't think we're gonna copper tack these. Put them on just like that. Kinda got a rubberized feeling to them. Never had a head gasket like that quite. They'll seal up. Set the head on. Yeah, you know. So you just gotta put a little bit of thread sealer on them. All right, one head down. So that's where we're at. Heads are torqued and bolted on. Now I'm gonna put the lifters in it and get the rocker arms and stuff all assembled. So stay tuned for that. All right, update. Rocker arms are on. They're not adjusted yet. I just barely rolled it to top dead center right there. And now I can do every one of these that the cam is down on. I'll adjust those, then I'll roll it 180, adjust the other ones, should be done. We'll see. All right, we are ready. I got silicone on, it's around the water jackets. The intake cleaned up right there. And uh, we're ready to put it on. I'm not gonna be able to film it and put it on. Maybe, maybe I'll put it on a tripod and see. Got good squish. Shouldn't leak. All right, so we're gonna pour some oil in this thing. This is my zinc additive to hopefully keep this cam alive. We're gonna run some Dello in it to break it in. Then we'll switch over to good old 30 weight probably. This is just an old distributor I cut off. Get her all purdied up, let it dry, and we can get it put in next week when we're not doing anything. <laughs> 